and welcome to Rathold's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 27th March 2024. So here we are taking daily edition of Hindu and we are going to pick out the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And after picking out of articles, we are going to see different dimensions and we are going to connect one subject with another subject from that respective topic point of view okay and we are also going to see like even any diagrams or maps or any infographics which are relevant from that article okay so that we are going to have 360 degree view of a topic so this kind of approach is very important to write your main answer and even to write a multi-dimensional essay yes this approach will works so now let us see the article so in the front page there are two articles which are relevant from our examination point of view so first article it is about the data of ILO so what is ILO it is international labor organization so title says employment scenario in India grim says ILO report so what is the meaning of grim grim is nothing but worried are serious okay so this is the meaning of the word grip that means the employment scenario is bad so there is increased unemployment problem in india so this is the thing which said by this i and go report so now let us see the dimensions so before seeing that dimension i want to introduce this announcement that is we rathod's ideas we are going to come up with this Offline and online prelims come mains foundation batch and this batch is for 2025. So here we are going to cover 100% of your syllabus. So there will be 100% syllabus coverage and there will be mains answered in practice will be start on the day of this offline foundation. And in the online course, you will be having mains answer writing practice, mains test series, everything. It is common for both offline and as well as online. But in this online, you will be getting the combination of recorded plus live videos. Okay. So the price is very affordable and there are very limited seats for this offline. So the capacity of the batch is just 70 students and admissions are going on. So don't be late. So take admissions as soon as possible. And this offline of this Rathor's eyes is located in Hyderabad. So exactly at this pillar 36, opposite to Vijaya Medicals and in Ashok Nagar, Hyderabad. So you can come to this offline branch and we are also even providing the free mentorship also. So if you want to get that as well, you can come to this offline branch and you can take the free mentorship and even we are providing free study space for the students who are going to prepare for this year prelims that is prelims 2024 so you can come to this offline branch so that you can also utilize that facility of free study space okay so that's all and now let us see the dimensions so this article is talking about unemployment So this topic is very important from your GS paper 3 under economy. So what are the dimensions you have to see? You have to see like different types of unemployment. So even in interview also you can get a question regarding these types of unemployment. Like we have structural unemployment, disguised unemployment cyclical unemployment, frictional unemployment. So you have to see like different types of unemployment and exactly what are the examples for that. And you have to see like what are the reasons of unemployment. So many of you are unemployed, right? So you are preparing for this UPSC examination. So you have to see like what are the reasons. The first one is so what is the demand? Out of this demand, there is a huge supply of the students in the market. And next one is lack of proper skills. And even what are the education we are having, they are not focusing on the practical. Okay, and even what are the books that we are using, they are outdated books. And what are the technology we are having and we learned, that is outdated technology. 
So in this way, we have lots and lots of problems that are the reason for this increased unemployment. So what is the outcome of this increased unemployment? So many of them, they are moving to other areas. For example, if you are staying in the rural areas, you are moving to urban areas. If you are in urban areas, you are moving to other foreign countries to do further studies and to get a job, right? And here, you have to see like, what is the impact of this unemployment? Okay, impact on women. So compared to men and women, women is more un unemployed. And you have to see impact of unemployment on society. So how you will be feeling if you are unemployed and how society will look at you. Okay, so because of this increased unemployment, there is also increased of crime rate. And even there will be increased migration. And it is also an important reason for the increasing of slum development. Okay, increasing of slum areas. And one more important area from your GS paper too, that is governance point of view. You have to see like, what are the measures taken by the government? And especially have to see like, different schemes came up by the government to provide employment opportunities. One such scheme here is PMNG, that is MG Narega scheme. Okay, MG Narega scheme. And we have PM Rozgar Yojana and Skill Development. Okay, Entrepreneurship Development. Okay, so these are some important schemes like Startup India, Stand Up India. So those are the schemes which are focusing on increasing of employment rate. Okay, so all these are the different dimensions that you have to think from this article point of view. Okay, now let us see the facts regarding this topic and here you have to see some facts regarding this eye elbow as well. So what is the context? So the share of those within secondary or higher education among the unemployed youth in India has almost doubled. That means here we are seeing unemployment in this youth who had done their higher education. So it has been increased to 35.2 percent date in 2002 to 65.7 percent date in 2022. So in 2000 there was just 35.2 percentage of people they are unemployment who, be, who completed their higher education. But now in this 2020 to 65.7 percentage of people they are not getting employment after their higher education. So this data is one of the very take a very important data which says about there is high rate of unemployment and, and this data it is according to India Employment Report 2024 and this report released by International Labour Organization. So how can you expect the question here? So here recently India Employment Report 2024 is in use. So which of the following organization released that report that is International Labour Organization. And if you see the details, it says that the report says youngsters they account almost 83 percentage of uh, our country's unemployed workforce. So unemployed workforce, about 83 percentage of people they are youngsters. And employment and underemployment of the youth increased between 2000 and 2019 but declined during pandemic years and the study which released by chief economic advisor says that educated youngsters they experienced much higher levels of unemployment in the country during the period okay so these are the some data which is given and this is authenticated data okay so here you have to see like so how this ILO collected this data and how this ILO released this data. So the labor force participation rate and worker population rate and unemployment rate, they showed a very long term deterioration between these years of 2000 and 2018 
and after 2019 we can see there was little bit improvement in these three indicators and here in this international labor organization which released india employment report 2024 and this report is based on this national sample survey and as well as periodic labor force survey so this is very very important and if you're talking about the key area so they are recommending like we have to improve in five key areas so first one is we have to promote job creation and we have to improve employment quality and we have to address labor market inequalities and we have to strengthen the skills and active labor market policies and we have to bridge the knowledge deficits on labor market patterns and as well as youth employment. So in these five areas, you have to remember these five areas. Like we have to improve employment quality. So we have to increase job creation and we have to assess labor market inequalities and we have to strengthen the skills and active market labor policies. So if you are doing something here, yes, we can decrease unemployment rate in India. And now let us see some facts regarding this ILO, that is International Labour Organization. So when this International Labour Organization was founded in year 1990. So this 1990 is also very famous for one incident in our modern history, that is Jalian Walaba incident. Yes. So in this 1919, this International Labour Organization was founded and it is sort of a three-party United Nations Agency and this ILO gives equal voice to workers and employers and governments to ensure the views of social partners, they are closely reflected in labour standards and also in shaping the policies and programmes. So in all these areas, International Labour Organization is very important. And how many member states are there? There are 187 member states including India and where the headquarters? Headquarters located in Geneva. So what is the aim of this ILO? It is to promote rights at work and enhance social protection and to strengthen dialogue on work related issues and even to set standards of labor and to develop the policies and programs so those policies and programs that have to provide decent work for all men and as well as women. So which are the reports released? So it will be released in a global wage report, world of work report. So these are the very important facts regarding your topic. Now let us move on to the next important topic in your newspaper. Again the front page itself. So this is very important. Topic says sensing threat from China, India joins the race to mine sea patch. So this article which is talking about, yes, we are having threat with China. So because of this, we are going for race to mine sea patch. So this article is very important. Especially it is talking about one sea mount that is A and C mount that is a fancy knitting sea mount. Okay, a fancy knitting sea mount. So now let us see this article in detail and now let us see the dimensions first. If you are talking about India boundary with China. Okay, so here we have Nepal. Here we have Bhutan. Okay, so this part is China. Okay, like this. Okay, so this is just a diagram I am drawing, so it is not exact. So, between India and China, we have LAC. So, what is LAC? LAC is line of actual control. LAC is line of actual control. So all means China which is focusing on aggressive expansionist policy. It is focusing on 
aggressive expansionist policy. So one such an example of this aggressive expansionist policy of China is string of pearls. Counter the string of pearls, India is also having one mission that is fish hook mission or fish hook policy. So, if we're talking about dispute between India and China across borders, so we have issues at this western sector and in this central sector and in this eastern sector. And actually China is coming up with development of modern villages across its border so that it can easily claim entire Arunachal Pradesh. And even China announced that we are going to come up with building of dams on this river Brahmaputra so that it is affecting the water security of our country. Okay, so not only India but even whichever the country is sharing boundary with China that is on a land and on water, so they are having the disputes with this China. And even because of this dispute from China, so India is coming up with exploration and this exploration in this ANC mount. So again you have to know some dimensions here about what is this sea mount. Okay, sea mount is nothing but, for example, let us see, this is the oceanic relief. So, we have continental shelf, we have continental slope, deep, continental rise, trenches, okay, mountains, above sea level and like this. Okay, so this is the water. Okay, so this is the water level. So whenever mountains are present inside the sea, wherever they appear above the sea level, they are called as islands. Whenever they are inside the water level, they are called as sea mount. So whenever they are having a flat base, they are called as buoyots. So how many of you wrote this year APPSC Group 1 examination? So in that there was a question regarding buoyots. Buoyots are the flat structures. It's a very simple question. Okay. So in this way you can remember the things. So now let us see this article in detail. And this topic is important from your GS paper on geography. And as well from geography paper. Uh, sorry. From GS paper to international relations. So why is the news? So India applied to ISA. ISBA that is International Sea Bed Authority. For rights to explore two vast tracts in Indian Ocean region, and these regions are not under the part of India's jurisdiction. That means we are going for exploring in the high seas. So the application explored one of these regions that is cobalt rich crust, which is known as a fancy nicotine sea mount, that is ANC mount. A fancy nicotine sea mount it is also called as ANC mount region. So you can get a question like ANC Mount region is in news so where it is located and they will be giving you options like Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Mediterranean Sea like that. It is an Indian Ocean region and it is very much rich in cobalt. Okay, it is also very important. It is rich in cobalt. So if you see details, it says that rights to the regions have already been claimed by Sri Lanka under a separate set of laws. So rights to the region have already been claimed by Sri Lanka under a separate set of laws. India's application is part motivated by the reports of Chinese vessels were undertaking reconnaissance in the same region. A highly placed official who declined to be identified. Okay, so actually India's application is motivated by the reports of Chinese vessels that are present in this Indian Ocean region. And actually we are going to explore this ANC Mount region. So it is around 400 kilometers long and 150 kilometers wide in the central Indian basin. Okay. So from India around 3000 kilometers we have this. 
okay we have this location of the same amount but according to unclos united nation convention of law of seas only under un, only until this 200 nautical miles it will comes under the jurisdiction of the country but it is present okay it is about 3000 kilometers from india's coast that means it is not comes under the jurisdiction of india okay so this is the thing that we have to remember and from an ocean depth of about 4800 kilometers it rises up to around 1200 meters and is very rich in some minerals like cobalt, nickel, manganese and as well as copper. So these are some important things and now let us see like what are these sea mounts. So if you see the sea mounts, it is an underwater mountain. So what is the sea mount? It is an underwater mountain and it formed through a volcanic activity. So because of this volcanic activity, so this mountain is formed and these are recognized as hot spots for marine life okay so they are recognized as hot spots for marine life volcanoes on the land or sea mounts they can be active and they may be like extinct or dormant volcanoes and they are mainly seen like they will be formed near this mid oceanic ridges where a tectonic plates are moving apart that means wherever they are divergent plate movement so whenever plates are moving away from each other that will lead to formation of this mid oceanic ridges and the planets two most studies mid oceanic ridges they are mid atlantic ridge and as well as east pacific ridge and some sea mounts they have been found near interplate hotspot for example wherever there is heavy volcanic activity and even oceanic island chains and wherever we can see like a uh, high seismic activity that will form island arcs for example like Japan. So near these regions we can see like presence of the sea mounts. So we are talking about the significance of the sea mounts. So they provide information about mantle composition. Okay, they provide information about mantle composition and how these tectonic plates evolve. So regarding this the information is given. And as well as oceanographers, they also study sea mounts to understand their influence on how water circulates and absorbs the heat and carbon dioxide. So this is also an important advantage of the studying of sea mounts. And sea mounts are home to diverse biological communities. Okay, and they are also a good place of life because they can cause localized ocean upwelling. And even the process by which nutrient rich water from the deep within the ocean comes moves up to the surface. Okay, so these are some important advantages of the sea mounts. So now let us see exactly where the sea mounts are located and how these buoys are formed. So these are oceanic relief structures. So whenever we are having a mountain, okay, so within the level of water, so there is no up coming off or uh, uh, mounting above the water level. So whenever it is coming above the water level, we are calling it as volcanic island. So what happens, so water will be moving and they will be having the power to erode. So whenever it is happening, that is where erosion is happening by the water, so it is forming a flat structure, it is called as guillot. I hope you understand what is the difference between water, sea mount, volcanic island and as well as guillot, right? And now let us move on to our page back. So this is a front page, that's it. And you can leave this city page. And even the state page also I found like very less articles important. There is only one article which is relevant. So now let us see that as well. So title says two more die of monkey fever in Karnataka. Okay. Okay, so here you have to focus on the key word that is monkey fever. It's also called as Casanova forest disease. So let us see the dimensions. It is called as monkey fever. Other name is Casanova forest disease. So you have to see like whenever any disease which is in use that is imported from GS paper 3 under science and technology from the chapter called as diseases. So here you have to see like 
which is the causative organism okay so which is the causative organism whether it is bacteria or virus or protozoa or any algae or cancers and you have to see like what are the signs and symptoms and you have to see what is a treatment plan whether treatment is available or not rx is nothing but treatment plan and you have to see what are the preventive measures because prevention is always better than cure preventive measures whether vaccine is available or not and not only this you have to see from vaccinations it is prevalent in which countries from which country we brought this disease okay so all these are the important areas that you have to think about and now let us see the notes part so why it is in use two people they died of this kasanoor forest disease this is also known as monkey fever in karnataka so how many of you are from karnataka so please be careful okay and if you see details it says that the viral infection spreads through thick bites especially people who are residing near the forest areas they are very vulnerable to this kasanoor forest disease and people they have been advised to apply thick repellent oil before entering into this forest areas so that we can take some preventive measures and if we talk about this kasanoor forest disease it is a zoonotic disease that means a disease will be transmitted from animals to humans and the disease was first reported in this kasanoor forest of karnataka in 1957 because of this it is known as kasanoor forest disease and even it is known as monkey disease or monkey fever because of its association with monkey deaths and the virus which has spread along the entire stretch of the western ghats region it also includes like maharashtra kerala tamil nadu and goa and now the deaths are seen in this karnataka region so what are the signs and symptoms symptoms will be like high grade a fever prostration nausea vomiting diarrhea and occasionally sometimes we can see neurological and hemorrhagic manifestation and we talk about transmission so it can be transmitted through the bite of ticks and gonads black face and langur monkeys they are highly susceptible to the infection and they play a significant role in the spread of virus in the human population so we talk about the treatment of this disease there is no specific treatment is available there is no specific treatment however prompt symptomatic and supportive therapy like maintenance of hydration hemodynamic stability management of neurological symptoms decreases morbidity and as well as mortality so in this way we can take some symptomatic treatment like based on your signs and symptoms so we can take the medicines so that we can get some relief from the symptoms okay so these are the important things that you have to remember and now let us move on to the newspaper here you can see one article title says kerala states a heat wave like conditions imd issues an alert okay yes almost i can say summer had been started so actually i experienced summer yesterday actually yesterday not yesterday day before yesterday so day before yesterday on monday we celebrated holy right so on that day to record video i have to come to this offline so it will be around one hour from where from please where you are living right now so i came to office on bike not on a car not by a car so i came on a bike so after recording i started around 11 am here and it was like very hot and i felt like yes we are facing this heat wave yeah so summer had been started 
So now IMD, IMD is nothing but India Meteorological Department which issued an alert of warning for this Kerala state and it will be around 40 degrees centigrade. So it is very high temperature. So here you have to see some dimension. So this article is talking about heat wave. So you have to see definition of heat wave. And this definition will be different from plains and hilly areas. And you have to say like what are the causes of heat wave and what is the impact of the heat wave on health, on society, on agricultural production, on water availability, on rainfall. So every area is what will be the impact. I have to see like so there are number of demands that are made by different states that we have to include this heat wave as a disaster but it has not yet been done. And next you have to see like what are the measures can be taken by government to prevent people to attack from this heat wave. So all these are the different dimensions that you have to think. And now in this editorial page there is one article it is about Israel must heed the United Nations Security Council for a ceasefire. I discussed this topic in our yesterday's class. So only one topic is important. So leave all these rest topics. They are not at all important. And here in this opinion page you can see one article. That is about it is time for comprehensive reforms to municipal elections. So now let us see some dimensions. So you know that panchayats and municipalities. You know like panchayats and municipalities. They are not present in our original constitution. So they are added by 73rd and 74th Constitution Amendment Act of 1992. So here you have to see like what is the structure of this panchayat. To know this you have to see like different committees and their recommendations like Balvantrai Mehta Committee, like uh, Sir Balvantrai Committee, Ashok Mehta Committee, like that. So there are number of committees and their recommendations and which committee recommended three tile structure and which committee recommended two tile structure. And the municipalities you have to see different types and elections to this municipalities. So this article is important from GS paper to under quality. Okay, so this topic is at most important from your prelims and as well as mains point of view. So now let us see the text and context. The first topic is the need to curb black carbon emissions. This black carbon is very very important. And so one of the major pollutant as well. So now let us see some dimensions regarding this article. So this article is talking about black carbon. So you have to see like what is this black carbon and what are the different sources of black carbon. Okay, what is black carbon? You have to see like different sources of black carbon. And you have to see like what is the impact of this black carbon. How this black carbon is increasing this global warming. Okay, how this black carbon is increasing global warming. And how this black carbon is also increasing the melting of glaciers. How this is impacting the melting of glaciers okay and what can be the measures taken to decrease this black carbon emissions and i can say like what important source is firewood burning so normally in rural areas people they will go for cooking of their food or uh, by using this firewood it is one of the important source of release of black carbon so to control this government came up with one scheme of PM Ujwala Yojana. Okay, so this scheme it is about providing of 
liquefied petroleum gas is lpg cylinders for the households who belongs to this bpl families so here you have to see even this scheme okay so here you have to see this scheme of pm ujwala it is very important okay so that is the thing that you have to see okay now let us see this article in detail so meanwhile i will have some water so please let me know like what is this scheme about and what are the details that you have already know about this scheme okay done with the scheme now let us see the context so if you see the context it says that black carbon is dark black carbon is dark and is like a sooty material so if you have go to any firewood area or if you have gone to your relatives who are cooking the food then you can see like black soot will be there so if they are covering the roof on this roof also you can see like black soot okay that is nothing but this black carbon so it is dark sooty material which is emitted alongside other pollutants when biomass and fossil fuels they are not fully combusted and it contributes to global warming as well and this black carbon so whenever you are saying like i will tell you one basic thing so in summer which clothes will you wear you will be wearing light colored clothes and in winter you will be wearing woolen clothes which are dark color why so dark color will absorb more heat and light colors will be reflecting the heat so here black carbon it is already dark in color so it will be absorbing more heat so it is a one of the important contributor of this global warming so because of this increasing of global warming climate change so it is posing like a severe threat or severe risk so if you see the details it says that black carbon most black carbon emissions in india arise from burning of biomass for example especially cow dung and straw and traditional cook stoves where we are using this traditional firewood i recall to 2016 study it says that the residential sector contributes that means the area where we are staying like residence areas so they are contributing around 47 percentage of india's total black carbon emissions and the key to enhance the quality of life in these areas lies primarily in the securing access to the clean cooking fields okay so whenever we are providing access to this clean cooking fields for these areas especially the rural areas we can ensure okay we can ensure the clean cooking field and according to 2016 the study says that the residential sector which contributes 47 percentage of india's total black carbon emissions and apart from that households even 22 percentage of black carbon is released by industries okay and this one is diesel vehicles releases black carbon of 17 percentage and open burning rural percentage and other sources they will get 2 percentage of or releases 2 percentage of black carbon and as per the data in may 2016 government of india came up with this ambitious scheme that is pradhan mantri ujwala yojana and under this scheme they have started providing free liquefied petroleum gas connections to the households who are belonging to this below poverty line and the important aim of this scheme it is to make clean cooking fuel to be available for this rural and poor households so that they will be not depending on the traditional cooking fuels and this program is provided connections to over 10 crore households as of january 2024 that means i can say this scheme is a very successful scheme in india and next article it is about can ai help in navigating mental health so this is one important application of artificial intelligence and there is a high chance of getting like what or the applications of your artificial intelligence so from that area you have to see this article okay
So now let us see this article and this topic is exclusively important from your science and technology point of view. So if you see why it is in news, context says natural language processing. So this natural language processing, it is one of the branch of artificial intelligence. And this natural language processing which enables computers to understand and to interrupt human language that mirrors human comprehension. Okay, artificial intelligence enables computers to understand and to interrupt human languages and by using the vast data sets and by using the vast data sets AI tools they can help to summarize information. So this information which includes clinical notes, patient conversations, neuro images and genetic information. So all these will be included in this artificial intelligence tools. So there is immense potential and promise in these applications and we expect it to see like there is a growing adoption and even we can use artificial intelligence to understand the mental health being as well. Okay, so this is about this topic, that's it. And now let us see like news page. So the news page, most of the articles are political articles. Okay, there is nothing much important in your news page. So let us search if there are any articles relevant from our examination point of view, is there or not. Yes, here you can see one article is talking about India and China and Philippines relations. India supports Philippine sovereignty, says Jai Shankar Sparks Beijing response. So our ex-affairs minister, he is on a visit to Philippines, that is Manila visit. And they discussed about the tensions between China and Philippines. And recently, Philippine Ocean had been attacked in the water by Chinese, right? So here, they discussed about the tensions between Philippines and China navies. And the China Ministry of Foreign Affairs says maritime disputes are matter between the countries concerned and third parties they have no right to interfere in the South China Sea issue. So here India and Philippines discuss the issues in the South China Sea. But China said that this is the matter should be talked by the countries to involve. So there should be no third party intervention. So here you have to see like some issues of South China Sea. South China Sea is some of the disputed area between China and many countries to sharing boundary with the South China Sea. So it is an issue regarding the territorial jurisdiction of the country. So especially you are talking about islands like Parcel Island. Party Island and Scarborough Island. And China also came up with this concept of 9 dash line. And it is increasing its sovereignty and territorial integrity in the South China Sea region. And this issue already uh, this issue already went to International Court of Justice. International Court of Justice squashed this 9 dash line, but China is not accepting this. Okay, so these are some important things and you can see map of South China Sea. So there may be a question. And if you move on in this business page, you can see like the keywords. Titan says India's forex reserves rose by $32.9 billion on BOP basis in April and December. So this article is talking about forex reserves. Okay, it is talking about forex reserves. So this article is important from GS paper 3 under economy so you have to see like what is this meaning of forex reserves and you have to see like which are the currencies 
which are part of India's forex reserves. And you have to see what is the significance. So what is the significance of increasing of forex reserves to India? So all these are the points that you have to see. And this one is quarter 3 current account deficit narrows to 10.5 billion dollars on rise in service exports. So this article is talking about services. So here you have to see the like two concepts. One is current account deficit and another one is service sector. So you have to see like what is the meaning of current account deficit and what is the formula to calculate this. So please let me know how can we calculate this current account deficit in the comment box. And if you see like different sectors of economy. We have primary sector, secondary sector, tertiary sector, quarterly sector and quinary sector. So it is talking about tertiary sector that is service sector. So service sector is a very good uh, sector in our country. Actually from primary sector we have to move to the secondary sector and from secondary sector to tertiary sector. So this is a cycle we have to follow. But what India did is from primary sector, we directly jumped to this tertiary sector and we are doing good in this tertiary sector, but we are very weak in this manufacturing sector. Okay, so these are the important topics and you can directly move on to this science page, which is in last. So in this science page, you can see an article that is inaccessibility and the cost triple efforts to treat sickle cell disease. So this article is talking about one important disease that is called as sickle cell anemia disease. So what happens in the sickle cell anemia is, you can see this image which clearly given right, uh, right. So this RBC will be like a disc shape like this. Okay, like this disc shape. But it is becoming like this shape, sickle cell. Okay, so I said it is one of the autoimmune disorder or genetic disorder that I can say. So here this article is saying about this sickle cell anemia disease. So what are the dimensions you have to think here is. So what is the sickle cell anemia? So what happens in this disease? Like RBC will be converted into sickle cell. So what will be the impact of this disease? And you have to see like what is the treatment plan? And what are the government initiatives? And what are the government initiatives? So these are the some important dimensions that you have to think from this article point of view and this is important from again GS paper 3 science and technology and even from GS paper 2 under health also you can connect this topic so these are the very important topics that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper and I will show like where can you get the notes of this topic so here in this Rathod's IS Classes Telegram channel, you can get the notes and you can easily download the notes. We are providing in the PDF format. And this is our Rathod's IS Academy YouTube channel. So please do subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And this is our website, Rathod's IS Academy website. If you want to take any online course, if you want to watch the demo videos, so they are available in this website. Okay. So, privilege is very near. So, if you want to take any course, you can take the course directly in the website. And if you want to talk to me regarding the courses, either offline or online, you can call me on this number 8074765513. Okay, is that clear? So, if you really like the class, please do hit the like button and please do share the video to your friends also. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our thoughts as you can.